On today's video, I want to cover different styles of website designs. I think this is really important so you can align expectations with your clients before you're starting to work on a new web design project. So this is key vocabulary that you need to know as a web designer. Let's rock and roll. Hey everybody, what is up? My belief is that is as a designer, you don't always have a personal style or that your personal style doesn't have to um, be what the client specifically needs. Because I do believe that each of our clients have unique problems that might require different solutions. And we can just bring our favorite style to every project because that's my, not might not be the right solution for the client. So what I like to do as part of the process when I'm designing a website is to show um, my clients several styles that might be popular at the moment, try to understand together with them what are the pros and cons of each style, and then understand what would be the best solution solution for their specific problem, you know, what the story they want to tell their customers and so forth. I want to show you how I'm doing this um, and, and go over it with you. So you'll have a more a better grasp of the different styles and you'll be able to implement it in your process as well. So let's jump right into it. I'm using Envision Boards here, which is basically a free tool to basically manage. Uh, I have a bunch of screenshots of websites here and I can categorize them. As you can see here, um, there's not too much of them, but you can see that it helps you get the get the, get the point. And you might see styles that you already recognize here. Um, let's go over them and see what the different ones are. So the first one is 3D. You might have seen 3D is pretty popular right now. And this is an example from a website. I think they've already changed it. But when I took it from Wealth Simple, it was kind of an animation, 3D animation of a coin rolling around the website. Now, the great thing about 3D is that you can achieve very realistic renders, but you can put them and even animate them in scenarios that would probably be impossible or impractical to do in real life situations. And that allows you to tell a story with real objects to give a feeling of, again, real world, but tell a different story or a different metaphor with it. One of the recent website that I did for my clients, we've actually used 3D for. And the, the reason was we wanted to use something like, you know, a board with a chip on it, but put it in a context that is surreal kind of like this is a capsule with a spaceship and it's floating there out in space this is something that is not real life so using real life objects in not real life um, situations might you know be a good use case for 3d using 3d of course you can use 3d to do other things like you know caricatures and and this is actually more use that is more in line with um illustration i would actually put this in just a different style of illustration. But um, yeah, so also here, what you have here is a realistic render, but obviously the, the character here are, are more illustration-y wise. But here you can also see that they've used 3D element, which look realistic, but to put them in this kind of a limbo and animation, they have used 3D to give this realistic effect. So that is 3D and it's very effective. Um, one style that is very, easy to implement and that's why a lot of people are using it is just the graphic style which is basically either taking screenshot or using just shapes vector shapes in the background to tell some kind of a story and this is this is great when you want to do things which are very simple right there is not not much to it um, it's basically just a screenshot and the, the shapes are actually just giving a little bit of a vibe um, they might tell a story this way or like they were here like showing graphs or something but this is more in line of just using abstract shapes to uh, I would I'm not sure if to put this under three or graphic actually but you understand that we can use graphics here to give more more story into the background but basically this is what it is it's more focused on graphics of screens icons and stuff like that illustration is something that is super super trendy and popular right now you've probably seen this all over the place and i've actually categorized it into handmade illustration and vector illustration so for handmade illustration it's usually things that if you're trying to communicate something that is more personal um, so anything that's 
regarding health or support where you want to demonstrate that there is something human about the service, a lot of times the way to do that it, it would be to use handheld hand made illustration just because it's imperfect and that feeling of imperfect illustration gives you that human feeling into it. Whether when you're using vector illustration, everything is kind of super, super sharp. Now, vector illustration is where you can really go wild and create things which obviously are not real life. And that's very, very, I think it's very, very popular these days because you can really almost tell any story with it. You can also kind of make it brand appropriate because you can use whatever colors you want. That's why I think illustration in general is a very, very um, diverse style and you can use it in, you know, outline illustrations or you know, vector illustration or kind of these geometric illustration or isometric illustrations. So there is many styles to the illustration and and a lot of times it might fit the the purpose because again you can tell many stories with it, but I also think people are now getting tired of it because everybody is using it. Another style which you need to consider is I called it minimal, but you can call also call it typographic or something like that. Basically it's trying to convey a story without actually using an image just by using a very clear call to action that is typographic and just creating an interface. So even though we do have here some kind of an image, I would still call this a minimal, minimalistic layout because most of it is just the white and the text. I wouldn't say that the image here is the core um, visual. And even here, we do have a little bit of graphics in the background, but I do think that this is kind of a minimalistic typographic layout where you're most focused on the text rather than being focused on kind of an image or a visual. So I think this is great for two reasons. First of all, we don't always have visual or a visual story that we want to tell. Sometimes, you know, even just because of the budget, we might go into this minimal direction that is very rather simple to do. If you do a good layout and if you have a very strong um, copywriting for the value proposition, then kind of a minimal typographic layout or a visual style can be very, very um, appropriate. Then we have photography, which is obviously very, very popular. And you do that, you use photography for a lot of reasons. One of them, if you want to show a product, obviously, if you're selling something, but it's also very great for kind of a lifestyle because it really shows somebody in some kind of a context. So photography is really, really great for that. Also, when you want to tell a story of people and when you want to tell a story of people that are, you know, not illustration because people that are being illustrated doesn't it, it communicates an idea, but it doesn't show real people. It doesn't help us. We as human beings, when we see a photo of a person, specifically a, a person that's looking you in the eye, we do get immediately that emotion of other people. So that's when using photos of other people is really, really great when demonstrating, you know, that this is a people, people bus business, or it really helps cr to create that emotional connection. There is now also a trending of kind of, I didn't know how to call this, so I called this artistic, but um, it's something that is more of in, in line of an art direction or really trying to create some kind of a, a brand that is not really, sometimes it's a combination of 3D photography or some kind of an art direction. Um, I think that the people that you'll see doing it, in this case, those are MailChimp or Zendesk, uh, those were actually <laughs> brands that people already know pretty much what they're doing. So they can be artistic in trying to create some kind of a more brand engagement. I think this direction is a little bit risky when people still don't know your business, don't know what you're doing. Um, so you probably are not going to go in that artistic direction. Um, I think they're, those are pretty cool and they might be, depending on your client, their situation, what they need might be a good solution. You can show them, look, people are doing kind of funky things, things that are abstract because they're trying to communicate values, right? You don't always have to show the thing itself. You can just, you know, portray a vibe or your values or color or some emotion in this kind of artistic layout. Those are the things that I show. Obviously, those are not all the styles. Obviously, some of the examples that I have here are actually pretty 
pretty old. What I usually do is I go to places like Lapa, um, Ninja, which is kind of like where I like to look at nice landing pages. Um, and you can see what's going on here or go to awards and see what's going on here and try to put these things into kind of a categories. Because as I said in the beginning, I just think this really helps to facilitate the discussion around what areas do we want to go with. Now, the point here is not to do something that somebody already did in the past, but it is to find a, a a good fit for their problem and also gauge their how they are as a client how do they react to the different visual because you might think that oh we need to go with this illustration style but when you, you show them these types of references you can see on their faces that they're not going to like it well so this is a really great way to just show references under different categories explain to them in you know in an intentional matter, what can be the pros and cons of each of them and have this discussion together so that you will have aligned expectations and nobody's gonna, you're not gonna get this, oh my God, what is this? This is not our brand, this is not what we need. You wanna know this before you go ahead and invest all this time in developing those beautiful visuals and layouts. I hope that was helpful for you as a web designer for more content on web design and freelancing. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. More awesome videos are coming soon. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.